Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Boozer here. Thanks for stopping by. Today's video, I want to focus on a champion that is super, super um, good in the game. It's free for everyone. So I want to make sure that everyone knows the importance and how valuable this champion is uh, for everybody. The champion I'm talking about is Mithrala Lifebane. She is a dark elf. So if you guys don't know who she is, she is the reward from collecting her fragments in the Hydra chess. So if you guys don't already know, you guys can get pieces of her from every Hydra chest you guys get. Um, ideally, you collect all her fragments and then you can summon her. She is one of the best champions in the game and in many, many different areas. And she is absolutely free. You just have to participate in the um, Hydra get some chests doesn't matter if it's top chest bottom chest whatever chest just get pieces of her you'll eventually get her you can probably get her before you get lydia and i think she is probably better uh, for earlier game players than lydia because the reason is there's not many champions that have a good cleanse so she has a cleanse plus a strengthen and a shield so she protects your team she offers poisons which can do extra damage against bosses and then she offers hex which is very valuable um, to do extra damage against bosses and waves of course also comes with increased defense and increased attack so very versatile to build teams around her so she will buff two different types of damage dealers for example also for earlier mid game players that somehow acquire her she gives you 80 accuracy as an aura which is actually insane especially when you're starting out trying to hit those stats for harder difficulty content Excellent champions, good stats all around, good speed, good HP, good defense all around. Very, very good champion. All right, so I want to go over two different types of builds that I have for Mithrala. Um, and hopefully you guys will get some ideas on how to use her best suited for your own accounts. So first of all, I'm going to show you guys my um, PvP um, Mithral, the one I use for arena. I don't use her too often, but I do have a purpose for her. So this is my PvP arena. So she's in six-piece stone skin. So this prevents her from getting uh, hit with stun sets or provoke sets or frozen um, from you know basically debuffs from from uh, sets. Uh, the thing with her ability, her passive ability, which makes her absolutely insane, is that um, her resistance is equal to is add basically added on top of accuracy so accuracy is added on top of resistance so she can get really high resistance um, so she can resist you know lots of debuffs in the game however she can't uh, resist this resistance does not um, stop things like stun sets or provoke sets or whatever so having a six p having a stone skin set uh, does prevent that uh, you can also try untouchable or immunity as well um, stone skin is susceptible to getting bombed however mithral does if you can get good resistance on mithral then you won't be too worried about bombs also bombs are pretty fringe like fringe use case so you won't see bombs too often anyway so having to spec your champion around that is probably not the best unless you have like tons of options anyways um, but immunity or untouchable would be better for bombs if that was your only use case for her um, anyways, this is my Mithrala. My here are my total stats: 80k HP, 256 speed. I just wanted speed around in the middle. Uh, basically, not too slow, not too fast. Still usable for Hydra, um, etc., etc. So I still use this PvP build in many different PVE areas, but she is more geared towards PvP. So total resistance, she has just under 980 resistance which i think is decent enough to resist you know 700 accuracy plus an accuracy aura it can resist that uh, but obviously it can't resist any kind of crazy increased accuracy play or you know even some of the crazier like 800 plus plus accuracy aura she probably cannot resist um, consistently but she should be able to resist like 99 percent of people out there um i have reaction i have um revenge accessories on her to help her um, versus some bosses, some boss content, but obviously you don't need this if you have like reaction or something that might be better for PvP. But this is just just what I had, and then yeah, it worked out. I'll show you guys the pieces on this uh, Mithrala. So I got speed, accuracy, resistance, speed, accuracy, uh, speed, resistance, HP. You want her HP really high, so she drops a nice shield on you. So this is a really nice piece: defense, HP, speed, resistance, uh, HP, triple. Res yeah, this is just these are just good pieces. 
accuracy with ascended resistance with resistance and speed and defense percentage and then triple resistance boots with hp percentage yeah these are just solid pieces triple speed accuracy banner and then yeah double resistance accuracy and then double hp here so um fully booked of course i have her in brimstone uh mainly because for pve content i still use her like i said for this build However, if you want to use her strictly for um, Arena, you don't really need to use Polymorph because she doesn't get debuffed very often. So you're probably looking for something to keep her alive, like War of the Fallen. Temporal Chains can, can be kind of disruptive, gives you an extra stats, extra accuracy here. But she doesn't really gain too much from Blessings unless it's Polymorph. Uh, sorry, unless it's Brimstone. Brimstone actually gives her the best. Uh, bang for her buck because she has good accuracy she can place it on bosses etc etc but it's not going to be very good for pvp <clears throat> so masteries masteries are pretty like kind of pvp focused i do have bigger shields here so i went down shields 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 and then in increase uh tie increased duration of shields and then obviously some accuracy down here resistance healing um you don't take resurgence because she's not likely to get debuffed so you're not gonna get super value from this this is pretty good value considering that she can't really heal herself so pretty good and then delay death and then in increase term meter so her counter attack's not super strong so you just take the increased term meter um, but yeah i think this is like generally you know not too bad um for pve and pvp but more pvp focused so i'll show you guys my pve build all right, so this is my PVE build strictly for my other account. You can see she's in four piece regeneration. I use her to solo some boss content, mainly like dragon, um, uh, lower ice golems, for example. She was used for like some um, some uh, spider content with Artac uh, before as well. But mainly her main use right now is to help take down uh, the dragon hard right now. So you see her total stats. She's a little bit faster, higher HP. Um, and then a little bit lower on the resistance and accuracy, but more than enough for, you know, light uh, PvP content. And this will cover basically all types of PvE content. So the same thing, you have the revenge accessories here to help out um, to take down bosses, for example. Um, and these type of builds are just very strong for all, all areas of the game. So you got you know, just show you guys the pieces here real quick, go through them. In this account i haven't really put too much um like time and effort into like fine tuning things but this build's very serviceable same thing here i went from brimstone brimstone's very good for pve and then for the pve i sh i went down war master uh in the beginning but now i don't need war master anymore so i just went down bigger shields and then defense uh it's a slightly different um mix of of masteries here although it's not too much different than the other one uh, I didn't go for extra accuracy. Um, the PvP bill, I went for extra accuracy, for example. And then PvP, I did go for um, resistance here instead of defense. And then the AoE splash. So it's a little bit different, but pretty much pretty similar. Um, if you want to go full PvE, you probably want to go down War Master. And then keep the support as well. Uh, I like going down for extra shields because I find her shields very valuable. Especially for like Hydra builds. Uh, hydra team comps for example uh, let's jump into a quick uh i'll show you guys like what i mean by pve content for her she's really good in some areas where she can just take down uh the boss by herself so this is kind of like my pve team where she kind of excels so we'll just hop into a quick run here So we got the seer package they're going to take down the waves and then we'll uh, have basically mithrala solo the boss but ninja is going to help out a little bit and speed it up and speed it up against the boss so this is where the revenge accessories for example really uh help out mithrala kill the boss faster so when she gets hit she has a chance to a1 and the a1 will drop poisons so She's keeping the team alive with the cleanse. She doesn't really need to. The other champions aren't really doing that much damage. But she is uh, keeping Ninja alive, for example. Uh, but she definitely does not need to keep uh, anybody else alive. Ninja is also in regeneration, so he can kind of keep himself alive too. 
Yeah. So you see how powerful the brimstone is. She basically can solo it herself, uh, but obviously Ninja um, is helping speed up the run there a little bit for her. So for PVE, she's this build is also very good for Hydra. So regeneration is very good because otherwise she won't be able to heal herself. Um, she can shield herself and she can keep herself alive for a long time, but she can't re uh, regain health. So having regeneration makes her incredibly tanky and she can do some incredible things, especially against bosses. So let's jump back onto the PvP build and I'll show you guys what it can do. All right, so we're back on the PvP version, so the six-piece stone skin. So these are two builds I have. I'm going to show you guys what I can do with this team in the arena right now. I will find some matches and uh, we'll be right back. All right, I kind of have her in like this like mix and match team just for fun. But uh, we'll see how it works against these debuffs. He has increased accuracy here um, and a lockout champion. So let's see what happens here. Um, see if Mithrala can carry this team, at least protect them, because we're going to be fully locked out here. So let's slow it down. <clears throat> so he's going to increase accuracy. And then he locked everybody out except for Mithrala. Mithrala can shut her down. And then you see that everybody's asleep. Nuker just died. Okay, so since Mithrala was not um, debuffed, resisted the lockout, resisted the debuffs, so she can come back, cleanse, cleanse off things. And now we go to work, even just the A1. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Right, speed up here. Mm, no point in using the hex. The hex is actually really, really strong. Mm -hmm. Again, resisted the lockout and all the debuffs, even without the stone skin now. Now we can use the hex. The hex will maybe control the match now. So <clears throat> when champions under hex attack there's a chance for them to be petrified which means they basically do you know turn to stone uh, they take reduced damage but they also lose their turn they can't get buffs they can't get healed it's just an insanely powerful debuff and i shoot myself so that kind of sucks so here we go mithrala again with the big shield trying to protect our harma taking tons of punishment here this whole match <clears throat> it's a very slow match because Harma obviously um, has the passive which cuts the damage and then they have a Harma out so we lose our Harma can Mithrala solo this with Sifi? I think it's possible <clears throat> it's very hard to kill this Mithrala so let's see if my Hex can do some work the Hex is good for control right? so we have Sifi here for control as well we got lucky sheep this time and we get locked out Let's see if he gets locked out but we get resisted uh from the mithrala again you can watch the mithrala kind of do some work with the poisons here mm -hmm. there's the petrification locks her down <clears throat> let's see where this goes lock him down again hex again you can see how powerful Mithrala is. I mean, Mithrala could probably solo these three by herself, to be honest. <laughs> so let's keep going here. Petrification again. Notice that petri petrified champions cannot get buffs. They cannot get healed. <clears throat> so we'll just target that Kaimar, try to pick him off the poisons. So Harma does ramp up damage over time, so she is uh, quite powerful right now, since the match has been going on for quite some time. So we'll go back to the Hex. Mm -hmm. There you go. Kaimar actually died. Um, let's, well, this, this Mithrala gave us enough time to uh, recover. And now all the champions are petrified. So you see how Mithrala totally controls the outcome of this fight. And it's basically over now. So she full resisted this warlord even with accuracy up, and gave our gave our team a chance to win. 
you can kind of see um, the power of her right here. Like, we don't have a proper team, right? Like, this is just a mixed match of player, mixed match of champions. Technically, Constantine didn't really do anything. He just kind of died and stayed dead. But you guys get the idea. Let's jump into another fight. All right, so we're basically taking the same team here again, minus Constantine against um, this team. It's pretty high accuracy, pretty fast team. Same kind of idea. They have the lockout. They have increased accuracy. So let's see how well this um, this team does. They also have a um, heal reduction that cannot be cleansed, so that could be a bit of trouble. Uh, but let's see where this goes. We'll do three-handed here. Let's see how strong Mithrala can be. Mithrala is the only one that can probably do anything because Sifi is only going to be able to do the A1. <clears throat> She's actually the fastest champion here without a speed lead either. Alright, so... We can cleanse up there. So we got the cleanse off. She didn't get debuffed. Alright, let's do the hex. They don't have a cleanse, so the hex is going to stick on them. Let's drop her. Yumiko being super annoying. Let's drop her. Alright. I mean, they don't really have a damage dealer, so it's kind of hard to compare here. It's just no real threat. They land the um, heal reduction. And then we got the cleanse again. Alright. Let's jump into another fight. This fight wasn't uh, as good as I was hoping all right let's try against this team we have bombs here we have the mithrala from them so that's a lot of um debuffs as well as they're gonna go first and then they have the helicath for the block damage so we need a way to get through the block damage so we have makagi for the um makagi for the uh, strip so let's see how this goes <laughs> But Mithrala is very versatile. We can kind of see their Mithrala as well. Um, I don't really want to kill them right away. So let's see if I can stun their Mithrala. Yes, I do stun their Mithrala. I don't really want to end this fight right away. <clears throat> but it looks like I will end this fight right away, I guess. All right, so that's not a very good um, fight as well. We just need to find some stiffer competition. One second. All right, let's try this team. It's a super annoying team. Got two revivers, Marichka, and then their DPS is more too. The good thing about Mithral is that her resistance is so strong that usually any kind of sheep uh, polymorph uh, that's not six star, she can have a good chance of resisting it. So it's not likely that she will get sheeped. Uh, but yeah, let's jump into this fight. Let's see what we can do here. Mariska is, yeah, pretty annoying champion. Also, Uko is very annoying as well. Okay. I mean, we're going to have to kill kill this team over and over. Alright. Hex them. Leap them. Electrification there. It's totally hosed. And then that's going to be it. So yeah, Mithra wasn't really necessary there. Our team just kind of overpowered him. Uh, we're just a bit too strong against uh, these players in this gold five uh right now at the beginning of the week all right let's try this team here um i mean should be fine yeah so we'll take we'll take out uh rotos we'll run ramantu no sure we'll run three three-handed against this team here All right, so we go first. Okay. So the bombs did not land on the stone skin, which is really nice. Here comes the hex. 
Okay. Hex is already applied, so... Oh, baby. Actually killed my uh, Harma there. Taras too strong. Okay. Okay, let's try to keep that Sifi alive. It's going to be tough. Yep, down she goes. All right, let's see if this can happen here. It's going to be kind of tough. Okay, got the defense up. So defense up is good for the extra buffs, extra boost and damage. Okay, let's see if I can end this fight. There we go. Yeah, I mean, so overall, like obviously Mithra is very strong, providing extra buffs for your team. She's very works really well with Harma and stuff, uh, just for the extra damage. Also good for damage, like attack based damage dealers as well. Um, but anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed these um, different kinds of fights with Mithrala for PvP. Um, like I said, she's excellent in all areas. Uh, showed you guys some PvE content as well as some PvP content. But she's just an excellent champion. She can be obtained from Hydra. And, you know, if you guys haven't been working on Hydra, definitely get on that. It's very, um, like, you can get her fragments from this bottom chest. So even if you guys are brand new to the game you guys can start getting her and like i said you guys can probably get her before you guys get lydia and she's probably um gonna be really really good for you guys so anyways thanks for watching guys best of luck um on her and uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next video